It's go time. Skirt, skirt. Not. No, but they weren't in order like that. Sweetheart, that is the handle. <laughs> <laughs> we took the tractor back and forgot to take the cab off. Can, can we just push it off? That was plugging it. That's fun. You're gonna wanna see this. What is that? That's fun. Guys, that's Never not um, okay. super clean. You're not getting salmonella from a mosquito. It was not what we were expecting, but it is a pretty awesome development. Got it. <laughs> what are you doing with the hammer? whack a -mole. No. <laughs> the old PTO handle. So I went ahead and ground it down, put a little fork in it. So this thing works pretty much flawlessly to uh, remove valves. Welcome back to Cross Thread Garage and Salvage. I'm Steve. I'm Caitlin. And this week we are tearing apart her 41 Ford, namely getting this flathead V8 out of here, breaking it down, tearing it apart, finding out if we have a Ford block with a mercury head or a mercury block with a Ford head. Eh, we'll find out before we're done today. We're going to tear this out. We're going to finish taking this cab off of here. We've got the neighbor's tractor rented today. And by rented, I mean borrowed. So we're grateful for good neighbors. We're grateful for good sunshine today. And uh, we're grateful for you guys. We just passed 3,000 subscribers this week, which, listen, I know. Big channels, that's no big deal. But for us, every channel starts small, and we're still there. We're grateful for it. So make sure if you're not subscribed already, which I know some of you aren't, Make sure if you're not subscribed already to go ahead and do that today before you're done. And let us know if you appreciate what we're doing here. This is not a restoration build. The name of the channel literally says it all, folks. Cross Thread Garage and Salvage. We're trying to make it roadworthy again, but we're acknowledging we're not doing it all right. We're just figuring it out as we go. So if you're ready to watch a dad try and teach his daughter how to do something he's never done before, buckle up. This is your show. All right, Caitlin, we're gonna pull that motor out of there. And if this whole thing goes to crap, we have at least this to fall back on. A $5 fan blade we can take to the swap meet this summer. <laughs> <laughs> first things first, let's go ahead and just set these heads down off of here. We've got one head that's a mercury head, one head that's a Ford head, there are 24 bolt heads. We don't even have to count. We just look if there's two holes here in the middle instead of three. It's a 24 bolt head. These have the forward facing water channels, water necks. There's no thermostats in each of those. I looked a minute ago and that was interesting. So we had a thermostatless motor. But those water. Thermostatless. Thermostatless. Yeah, it is a thermostatless motor. No thermostat in the motor. motor. I think that's right English. So we had an open water jacket uh, all around the block, which is actually probably the result of this being a flathead. They're notorious for overheating. Problem with that is that they often crack, especially in here uh, or in here somewhere, because this is a shared, you can see below this junk here through that hole, through that hole, through that hole. That goes down to this exhaust um, manifold here. So this is the exhaust that's shared by these two center exhaust valves. So the goal here is to tear this down to just a bare block, get it out to a machine shop, get it pressure tested, magna fluxed, look for cracks. Only about one out of every three of these flathead V8s is rebuildable. So we're going to see if it's rebuildable. If it is, you get that statistic it's got a future project down the road. Uh, I read a lot on the internet. Old, no. old 90s, early 2000s Ford forums on flathead v8s it's you know 45 percent of statistics are made up on the spot i i think i heard that uh from someone somewhere me here right now oh that's where it was right <laughs> <laughs> all right quit trying to hang crank that motor wow. let's get this thing off of here first thing we're gonna do is set the cab back and that will give us room to get in and remove the bell housing bolts. You know, 
This summer we were at the Good Guys Car Show and we met Troy from Rad Rides by Troy. And he said something that kind of resonated with me and that was somebody else already built it this way once. I don't want to build it the same way. There were tens if not hundreds of thousands of these trucks on the road at one time. There are examples of them in museums and collections all over the place. It's just, uh, it's not a functional drivable vehicle for a 15 year old. So we're gonna make it a functional drivable vehicle, hopefully. hopefully. Lord willing, by the time we're done, it will be that. You know. Well, by the time we're done, it's all it about won't be making 15. good content. Don't for, talk while I'm talking. You can't talk over me. Uh, I believe I was talking first. I know, because you stopped and I said, by the time we're done, I won't be 15. And you kept talking. By the time we're done, you will be 15. Mark my words now, YouTube. This truck will be done before her 16th birthday. I highly doubt it. If it's not, you're going to have to wait to get your driver's license until the truck's done. Not happening. Well, how are you going to take a driver's license test if you don't have a truck? Right. Okay, time to get to work here. Caitlin's obviously doing it already, but she's going to dig out. Oh, wait, you don't have to dig out those bolts. These bolts up here. We just Look need, at these ones I just found. We just need access to those. You just found it, like kind of the way Columbus found America, you found it? Like, yes. <laughs> like it was there, somebody put it there, lots of people knew it was there. Yes. If you were reasonably thinking about it, you would know it was there. Yes. But you discovered it? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Just calm down. Break it. One pawns daily only. <laughs> Breaking some new ground there, Copernicus. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, Caitlin is working on getting that starter out of there. The starter just has two bolts that run all the way through the body, but there's a clip uh, on the back, like a mounting bracket that goes to the block. She's got to get to get out of there. So, and then I want to show you guys something you won't believe here in a minute. I thought for sure we were just going to cut the exhaust and get this off. Human and swallows. I threw a bar on this one just to see if it would break loose and it literally just fell. So I've loosened up all of them except for this one. I just want to show you guys. Ouch. <laughs> it's not the same size as the rest of them. Shucks. So let me upsize that one. Wait. What? You don't have the right size either? No, I need a, I need a baby one. Crossroad Garage, just guessing our way through a project. No, I, Ow, hey. Just up to my foot. Those are still toe boots. Look at how easy that comes out of there. Look how I was literally sitting right here trying to do what you told me to do. I know, but seriously, folks. There's that mosquito that I killed. That should not. Who knows when that was out of there last? You get I malaria. Literally could have been 50 years ago. Seminole. You're not getting salmonella from a mosquito. with it. Uh, I don't. Okay. Okay. Take that generator. When you're, once you get that bolt back in, take the generator and put it on that shelf over there. We're just going to start stacking parts on that shelf. Part shelf. All right, guys. So what we've got here is our oiler oil filter tube. There's a large can oil filter. It's I think it's already on the part shelf over there. I call it the part shelf two so, minutes ago, and now that's what we're referring to it as. The part shelf. Yeah, it's a good word. So the oil filter was a is a giant canister size filter, but it actually only filtered between 10 and 20 percent of the oil, um, which was a really ineffective way of doing it. But it was better than the no filter system that these blocks were introduced with. I'm looking at the face of this piston, and I'm seeing a 040, I think through the soot. So we're going to get a wire wheel, polish the soot off of there. Because if that's already 040 stamped on the top of that, that means this motor has been rebuilt and bored out 40 over, 40 thousandths over. Mm -hmm. 
And that is definitely a 040. You see the 040? Getting a phone call. Hey. Yeah, we're just pulling the motor mount bolts and then throw a chain over it and pick it up. You want to come over? Okay. We'll see you soon. Grampy's on his way over. Okay, what are you doing? I'm using the most useless object I've ever found in our garage. A magnetic. I've never grabber. used it. Never. It's useless. For the past seven years that you've had this, I've never found a use for it. And now, since I can't get the doors open because we boogie tied them together, I can't. Did you say boogie tied them? What's that called thing called? Bungee. Bungee. Right. We bungee strapped them. Now I'm finally going to use this. I'm actually, a spy. What is his name? James Bond. James Bond. Right. Ha 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 ha. Look at that. You're ridiculous. No, I'm a genius. Sometimes my genius, it generates gravity. Can I come up here? It did or did it? Yes. It did. We don't have anything under the front of the transmission. That's going to keep it from falling down. That's a good point. Get, grab a, chack, a jack, Caitlin. That's why we brought Grampy in. Wait, a jack? Like a project. Jack or jack? Something's still connected underneath. Yeah, it's the bottom there. Caitlin, show everybody that plate that was hanging down on the bottom of the... Plate. Yeah. There's a dust shield on the bottom of the bell housing that um, just, you know, didn't crawl. A horsepower tractor couldn't pull it apart. <laughs> if, if you didn't hear that snide comment because he's not mic'd up, consider yourself blessed. <laughs> but I think, Caitlin, if you give it a little bit of a squeeze Ew. now, it's going to come apart. There Is this go. jacked up? You got to that one. It's really simple when you take everything apart, huh? It's go time. Skirt, skirt. All right, well, Dad's leaving. Caitlin had to run and grab a pair of volleyball shoes that were for sale on Marketplace. I guess that's a priority in our life right now. But I want to show you guys something here. How easily, once we have it disconnected, I think that clutch plate was what was engaged because it never moved that freely before. Tighten the crank bolt. Something's moving there, isn't it? Mm hmm Okay, last bolt, Caitlin. Help. No, just pull it all the way through. Grab everything. <clears throat> Don't let it fall off there. Just go set it on the on the workbench. I'm crazy. Let me throw these. <laughs> Grab a socket that'll fit those four right there. That was eyeballed just so everybody knows. Sounds a little big to me. You sound a little big. It's been really warm today. I don't know why my lips are so chapped. My lips are super chapped. Do you want some chapstick? No, I don't want chapstick. What? Because... <laughs> Well, your mom tells me that she prefers my lips to feel like a pair of worms that she picked up off the driveway the day after a rain, so. Uh, what? <laughs> You're not even funny. That's Dry, <laughs> dried and crusty. That... It's weird, but she says that's what she prefers. No, go away. <laughs> you may need to get a ratchet on there. Go away. <laughs> You're so weird. I don't... Actually, is it possible that those are reverse 
thread? I don't know. Okay. Regular thread. Oh, there it goes. Tight. Okay, put your hand on there. How heavy is this? Uh, That's a spider. I don't know what this is. What are we looking at here? Ooh. Is this a fuel pump supposed to be up here? Is this a gear set? Crumble for the fuel away, pump Charlotte. What? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what we're talking about. I, I have no idea, myself. guys. Ugh. Never done this before. Where does this go now? Where do we go from here? Coming in hot. No one else, not. All right, Keelan. Pulled your first motor at 15. Got it on a stand. We gotta get it kinda torqued a little bit, positioned a little better. Nothing left to do now, but finish it. So we're done for tonight. Um, it's Monday night, I feel good. So good. Oh, we took the tractor back and forgot to take the cab off. I'm not asking Glenn for the tractor again. <laughs> Yikes. Look, the thing is in pretty rough shape. All the glass is already getting replaced. Can, can we just push it off? Push it off? Can we just... Throw a couple pillows no, I'm and I'm saying just... put some cardboard <laughs> down there so we don't like ruin everything, but just like <laughs> roll it off. <laughs> I mean... All right, hey, don't go anywhere because that's gonna happen somehow. <laughs> Hello. All right, we're back in the garage today. It is cold and rainy once more here in Northern Ohio. So, Caitlin's getting ready to tear this down. But before we do that, I wanna measure the stroke and determine whether or not this is actually, maybe has a mercury four inch crank in it, four inch stroke crank, or if it's a regular Ford three and three quarter. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna measure the rise and fall of the piston, that would be the stroke on its full bottom dead center, top dead center. Where's the where's the tape measure? Um, I don't know. Find you the tape measure. Literally never find it. But you notice when this is at top dead center that it's actually above the block. So what we've got is a magnet here, Hello. stuck to the face of the block, and we're going to use that to measure the dead center of the piston when it's at top dead <sighs> and bottom dead center. Tape measure. So. You got tape measure? I can't find it. Did you check my carpentry pail? Mm-hmm. I found the tape measure. <laughs> we can now get started. Okay, you run the crank. Uh, I'll uh, run the measuring tape. Right. At bottom dead center, we're at four and three sixteenths right in the center of that piston. So bring that all the way up. A little bit more. Come back to me, I felt it fall. I don't have a feeler or a uh, dial gauge a here, feeler? guys. I'm using my finger right there. Right there, we're at three sixteenths what? off that flat edge, which means that's a four inch stroke. It's math. I. I wouldn't expect all of you to understand. Where's my hat? I got my haircut. I got my haircut too. Actually, Caitlin and I both got our haircut by uh, the sponsor of today's episode. Me. I cut her hair. Yep. And then I cut my own hair. Because that's what I've done since I was 13. And then mom came and corrected both of our hairs. <laughs> no. Mom yeah. didn't have to do anything with my hair. Do you need a hat though? Where's my hat? It was... I hooked it on the tractor. That's a, you're not putting that on. That's my good hat. Yeah. No, it's not. Okay, so you're going to grab, you see all these bolts right here that are holding down this intake? Uh -huh. Leave the carburetor on here. I think we'll leave this on here. This isn't holding it down. This is just connected to the thing, right? Right. That's got to come out. That's got to come out. Every one of these. Does this has to come out? That has to come out. Guys, to confirm, I did a little bit of looking into this today. To confirm that we have a mercury crank in here, uh, once we have the oil pan off and drained, 
We can actually measure the counterbalance on it. Somebody has obviously built the motor, and we presume if they built it to work in a working truck, they may, in fact, have upgraded the internals to a four inch crank, which would be sweet. It does not fit. Get a... No, it's too close to the... Oh. To the Wait, I so does that mean I'll have to like... Eh? Probably. Shucks. Not all of them, but a couple of them here in the middle, you're gonna have to just size? get a box end wrench on. Did you guys even... call that a box end or a spanner wrench? What do you call that? Hmm? What is it? Tell me. Right now. No, don't, not later. In the comments right now, what is it? So our new friends over at the Sweet Patina sent us over some of their skeet skeet. Sounds like your phrase, skirt skirt. Skirt skirt. <laughs> some of their penetrating lubricant, which I would love to be able to use on a stuck bolt, but this thing doesn't actually oh, have a single stuck bolt That's literally on it yet. Loose. Everything is loose. Um, I don't know what some of these stampings mean. Maybe somebody can tell me what an F42 on a mercury head means. EAC versus EAB. I don't know much of anything actually. So you guys tell us. This is so much easier. Going from the top. Caitlin's figuring out the mechanic hack. Oh. Right here in live time. What? No way. This is an 8BA head or an 8BA motor, which means if it's a Ford block, it came out in 1946. It's a Mercury block. It came out in the early mid thirties, 32, 36, I can't remember. An 8BA motor from Ford is a 100 horse motor in the truck. A Mercury 8BA is 110 horse. That would be from the extra displacement. But these were only like a six to one compression ratio. They were not super high torque or high horsepower motors in any capacity. Um, the fuel pump is missing on th off the back here. There should be a gear driven fuel pump, which actually I think is what this plate down here covers is this, the gears to be serviced somehow there. But this is a got a block off plate. So it was a dual purpose breather and fuel pump here. But you saw that there was an electric fuel pump on the firewall on ours. I'm gonna grab the distributor out of the front here. Look at air. No, there's not. No, but they weren't in order like that. Sweetheart, that is the handle. <laughs> Another indicator we're looking at here on the identification of the motor is the base of the carburetor or the head of the intake. So mercury intakes actually were a four bolt, one, two, three, four, all corners. Fords are a three bolt pattern, and this is a three bolt pattern. So we know we at least have a Ford intake. Caitlin, do you know what the fastest food is? Um, no. It's milk, because it's pasteurized before you can even see it. <laughs> Terrible. Get it? Cast your eyes? Yes, I yeah. Oh, now I get it. Oh, my word. <laughs> you didn't get it the first time. That's horrible. I'm not called daughter jokes. <laughs> Broke, you know my motto. Break it. Get a bigger hammer. Uh oh, I think mine's better, but. Try that now. Try picking straight up. I feel like there's still a bolt that you didn't somehow. Nope, that's it. Whoa! Oh, oh. Oh, wow. Guys. You're gonna want to see this. What is it? Hey, 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 hey. Oh boy. Hey. Here we go. Look what you. <gasps> <laughs> oh, 
Yikes. <laughs> Got to be kidding me. What is all Oh, that's fun. Guys, that's Never not um, okay. super clean. Um, before we do anything else in there, Caitlin's going to grab what the water pumps off the front. We've got to remove all those valves. What? How? What? Uh, with a tool we're going to have to build to pull the spring down to remove the retaining clip that's up here. There's a retaining clip on the top of each of them, a little horseshoe clip. Oh, and why so are we we'll, doing this? So that these valves can come out of the top of the block. And then we're going to flip it over, pull the oil pan, pull the crank, and remove, well, remove the piston before we pull the crank, but you know what I mean. Right, I know exactly. So that's what we're doing, tearing it all down. Okay, we had one bolt that uh, it wasn't actually tight, um, even though it was inside of the water jacket. Each of these water pumps has one an internal one uh, bolt. So it, I think it had been rounded off before because as soon as we put a socket on it, <coughs> it started spinning on top of the head. So just had to downsize it, force one over top of it. It's just a, it was the next size down, half inch and uh, run it out by hand instead of using the gun. So and that's the second water pump. Am I opening this? Yep. There you go. Eyeballing it with the old inch and an eighth. Ha! Bang your thumb. <laughs> I mean, we're a year into this. <laughs> Didn't think I'd still be telling you which was right. Pick up. Take. Ah! That was what. Uh oh. Shucks. That's a lot. We're, grab the plug, sweetheart. It's in the bucket. Oh no. Why is it not flowing? Oh, this is about to get real messy. <laughs> um, <laughs> shucks, it's all over my pants. <laughs> and my finger hurts. Why is this funnel literally <laughs> filling up with oil and not flowing? <laughs> Did you drop the plug in yes. the funnel? <laughs> Are you serious right now? <laughs> oh, girl. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. That was plugging it. That's fun. Well, time to break out them TKO hand wipes from the boys over at Sweet Patina. How is that my fault? Just kidding. <laughs> Whose fault might you think it would be otherwise? Just wipe, <laughs> wipe the edges down that are exposed now. Ew. That's yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. I don't want all that grit in there. So as I'm turning it, just wipe the bottom of the cylinder faces out. Got it. <laughs> what are you doing with the hammer? whack all No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hand me that uh, whack a mole hammer there. Ew. Yeah, I didn't get... Ooh. That's not great, guys. This is gear driven, which means the cam shaft, which is up here, that drives the lifters up and down off the different lobes, turns the opposite direction Whoa, as, watch for your swing. as the crank shaft, which is down here, which is what that smaller gear is. Where the That's neat. That's pretty neat. Let's flip this over. Right.
bit of something in the pickup filter. A little bit of moths. Are those moths? Those are moths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? Ten. Ooh. Those are moths that got in the oil. Don't, don't do that. Just Ooh. stop. Here, just throw them away. Here's their bones. Well, they're moths. They don't have bones. I so I guess that would mean if this is the pickup Ooh. tube, then what I was asking earlier about for the fuel pump is actually the oil pump. All right, let's measure this counterbalance. I think it's six inches is a four inch stroke. So we have a four inch stroke. So this is actually a mercury crank, which is awesome. Guys, I mean, Caitlin, you should be more excited than you are right now. You own a really desirable 8BA block. How much? Trophy to buy it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what can I sell it for? I'm going to be not in here. I'm going to be 10 dollars. I'm going to be 15 dollars. I'm going to be 15 here. Not 20, not 20. I'm going to be 20 dollars. Thank you, sir. 20, 25, 5. I'm going to be 25. I'm going to be 25 now. 30, 30. 30 dollars? No, it is a very desirable. Uh, build option. So we actually are pretty stoked about this. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. <laughs> it was not what we were expecting um, because of some of the external indicators, but it is a pretty awesome development. So we're at kind of a critical stage here. So it's really important right. that you not mess things up right here. Okay. You understand what I mean when I say that? Yes. And don't lose it down inside of there. Right. Like the face of someone who has said nothing happened. You just did you drop it in there? Uh, huh? It might have. <laughs> Could be. So, just for the record, now Caitlin has dropped a locking mm. nut, and she is using the one tool that she said was only good for James bonding her keys out of the cab when she boogie tied the door shut. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a light. flatheads are kind of weird. The passenger side is one, two, three, four. Driver side is five, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna pull the bearings here, or pull the rod caps and look at the bearings. Whoa. You never wanna see streaks in it like that. So Wait, you can actually, come out? you actually see like the copper material on the bottom there. That is an indication that the bearing and it's chipped. is where, no, that's relief there for oiling. It's really worn out. Catch you. Good catch. Okay, so there's Whoa, one. Listen. So these rings, these are compression seals, mm -hmm. the top two. This one's an oiler and this one's an oiler. 
See how they've got like a wavy kind of rib, ribbed center? Right. That's for pulling oil up and down. Oh, is this good? Cool. Let's see the bearing. Oh, yeah. Look at this bearing surface, guys. Oh, wait, no. Look at that bearing surface. That is not what you want to see. Also, you don't want to see moths in your oil pan. Oh, baby. That one's <laughs> way worse than the first one. Row. That's almost all the bearing material gone. Okay, guys, got a feeling the rest of them are going to be kind of just like this. So kind of a rinse and repeat scenario going on here. Dad. Fingers are loose. <laughs> that one's loose. Oh, there's three. Yeah, so one of the weaknesses of the V8 flathead is that it's got three eh. main, main bearings. Most would have five. Better support the crank. Hey, help. Okay, let's get a small pry bar. No metal on metal. Well, there's enough grease there that there's not metal on metal. You don't say. It's, I actually never would have guessed that. A screwdriver. Like I said in the first place. This isn't a screwdriver. This is, uh. this is a flat piece of metal that identifies as a bearing removal tool. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So here, this is why we're having a little trouble getting it with a hammer because there are corresponding half moon grooves in the block here that correspond to these guys here so that those can't move left to right when they're locked in there. And that explains that. But it's, so this is, should I marked them though. lift out of here now. This is gonna be, I don't know, probably 60 pounds. One, two, three. <gasps> there you go. It's a lot heavier than I thought it was. You're gonna to have to work it up because you've got this. Go straight up. One, two, three. Yeah. There you go. That's my finger. What do we drop? That was the main bearing off of this end. Okay, I'll get it from here. Oh, that's heavy. Yep. It's that's not 60 pounds. That's probably a little bit more than 60 pounds. Good job, Dad. I always wanted to be a guy that had a shop with a crank standing up right in the corner. Actually, me too. Shop goals achieved. Listen, the thing with YouTube is you can edit a video to make it look like you know what you're doing. And if you've been watching us long enough, you know, we don't know what we're doing most of the time. What we do know is how to figure something out. And that's really the key here because a week ago, I couldn't have taught Caitlin how to pull a flathead V8 out of a Ford truck and disassemble it. I'd never done that before. I didn't know. What I do know is how to figure something out and do basically what an engineer 80 years ago designed to have happen. This motor was designed to be taken apart and put back together. All we're doing is precisely what it was designed to do. So could I teach Caitlin a week ago how to take it apart? No. Have I taught her this week how to figure out how to take it apart? I hope so. And I think that's probably more valuable. Yes. We'll see. All right, guys, we've got laid out here uh, a full valve assembly that uh, I'm going to kind of show you how they piece together. We've actually already taken a couple of these valves out uh, just to make sure that we understood what it was going to take to do that. I'll show you in a minute how we did that when Caitlin starts pulling out the rest of these valves. 
Okay, so this is our valve, nothing special here. Both intake and exhaust valves on the eight BAs are the same size. Valve goes through the block this way. In the block is the valve guide. So it goes in here like this. And then below the block, which let's just picture there's an imaginary cast piece of metal right here, Caitlin. Mm. Right below the block goes this retaining clip, just like that. Now this is what I thought we would be able to actually grab here through the spring, because the spring goes over this. Grab that and pull down and pull the valve guide out of the block, at which point um, you can pull the retaining clip and the whole assembly actually can come out of the hole. Our valve guides are all proving to be pretty sticky. They've just been in there for 60 years probably. But below the spring, and I'm not going to compress it, so I'm just going to take that out so I've got room. Below the spring goes this little uh, cup right here. And then a retaining guide goes inside of there. And then you've got a set of two-piece. You see this ridge right here? And you see the corresponding ridge right there? Mm -hmm. So those go in there. The other one goes on top of it like that. And then the spring comes down with that cup over it. And now it can't come off the bottom of that valve. Mm -hmm. So if we had, we don't have, because I'm not going to compress it, this valve guide in here, this would be inside of the spring like that. And it would be compressed down with this horseshoe clip here, retaining it in the block. So. What we need to do is do all that in reverse, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So <laughs> they make a special removal tool for these valves. Um, I didn't have one or the time to wait on one to get here if we ordered one. Super greasy mess. So I thought to myself, self, and I knew it was myself because I was wearing my own underwear, and I recognize the sound of my voice. Thought to myself, self, where have you seen a nice sturdy piece of flat bar recently? And then I remembered, we cut one out of the floor of the tr this truck, the old PTO handle. Nice thick stock. So I went ahead and ground it down, put a little fork in it. So this thing works pretty much flawlessly to uh, remove valves. So why do you need her? All right, Caitlin, so we're gonna start with the valves that are closed. So. Just start right here in the middle. This guy is gonna go right underneath that retaining clip. I'm gonna pick it up. The whole valve is gonna come out of the head here and you're gonna just use the hammer and tap on it. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna drive the valve out of that retaining cup, let that two piece retainer clips fall out. And then I'll let the spring down. I'll pick up on it again. And this time the valve will come out all we've got to do is get a screwdriver behind it, I'll let off the spring, and that will release it from the rest of the retaining assembly. We can pull the valve straight out of the head, and then it's just a matter of pulling out the clips and the spring together, and then we're gonna drive the valve guide backwards through the block and take it out here. Okay? okay. Make sense? Yeah. Let's try that. So the key is to just get right underneath it, so just tap harder. One more time. Good. Saw the retaining clips go flying there. We'll use our useless tool here to get one clip. See that? Don't scratch anything. Just put it in there. There you go. That's good. I'll grab it with your hands. Pull it straight out of there. Twist it if you need to. Kind of walk it out. There you go. One valve's out. Now I'm going to put this in the middle of the spring, pick up again, and now the retaining clip and cup are down here. There we go. Springs out. You take this handy removal tool, 
which happens to be Deepwell 16 millimeter socket and a short extension. Place that right on the top of that valve guide. Take your hammer, beat that backwards in there. You're gonna have to hit it, so just hit it. There you go, don't hit me. Keep going, keep going, almost there. Perfect. Valve guide and clip are out. So, one valve. We've got seven more to do, and then two more on this side. So right now we have four valves that are open. We'll have to get all the ones that are closed out, and then we can actually turn the cam over. And uh, once we get pressure off of those, those valves close. We can pull them out. Once they're out, we can actually slide the cam out. So. So Caitlin's gonna take the oil pump out of the back here. Should twist out of there, I think. It had a, re yep, had a retaining bolt we had through there. But with that out now, I'm gonna go ahead and work this cam out. And I think the easiest way to do that is I've got a strap wrench here on the front that allows me to get some torque on it to turn. And I'm gonna put a wrench in here behind this gear. And there we go. All right, Caitlin. We're just gonna walk this out. Come here and grab this. Oh, it's coming out. There we go. Where's your Hey, now you, carefully, you've gotta be careful not to damage anything. Nope, don't wiggle it. I'm not wiggling it. Just, stop, let me have this stop, in. Stop, stop, stop. Let me have this in. Let me have this end. You guide that in through there. Okay, nice and carefully. Okay, now grab it here in the middle. There you go. Camshaft's out. Whoa. Oh my word. If you had fallen right there. Unbelievable. This kid's been looking for a place to fall and hit her head since she was born. Okay, we got some solid what? lifters. They just pop right out? <gasps> yep. I take them all out? Yep, take them all out. Notice that they're hollow? Yeah. So the only thing we haven't done yet is pull the back cover off here to get the gear for the oil pump out but we'll we'll do that before we take it to the machine shop once we get it off the stand here we'll just stand it up on end pull that off real quick so it's cleaned up okay last thing we got to do is oh <laughs> last thing we got to do is get this cab off of the frame so um yeah should land right there somewhere. All right, guys, we've all heard the phrase, if it works, is it really that dumb? Mm -hmm. Well, no, but we don't know yet if this is going to work. So hey, there's mud on this. The plan is to just kind of walk the cab down there. The four wheeler ramp is actually strapped and pulled tight to the frame. So it shouldn't pull away from there. But um, we still need to be careful because we don't want it rolling off of there. We just want to bring it down as gently as possible. So you <laughs> grab the front and I'll grab the back. Great. I think I should grab the back. Is you there's should more? grab the back? Yeah. Um, it is what it are at this point. I think I had a piano dolly around here somewhere. Why would you have a piano that. dolly? Because every once in a while I like to move pianos. Boom. Perfect. Curious. I'm going to pick up on this mirror. You grab that rusty hole in the back and we'll see what we can do. Lift with your neck, okay? I... Don't hurt yourself.
a perfect landing. Done and done. It's on wheels, Caitlin. Only thing left to do is push it out of the way. Well, might need to clean that up a little bit. What do you think, kiddo? You ready for this project? 